The companies admitted collecting personal data about people's home computers. The information was gathered using these street view cars, the same ones that take close-up photos of people's homes and gardens for the 360-degree street view service that launched in the UK last year and raised concerns about privacy. Google decided to use the cars for a second purpose, to search for secure wireless internet hotspots, such as cafes and hotels. It was part of a project to help users pinpoint where they were on a map. The company says there was a coding error and it ended up collecting personal data from unsecured networks. Google won't admit exactly what it found, but experts say it could include snippets of emails, photos and website addresses. What we're clear about is here that we made a mistake and we're determined to learn the lessons from that and make sure that this sort of thing can't happen again. So we're going to have an internal review looking at our procedures to make sure that we've got robust things in place to make sure that this sort of thing is properly addressed in future. We'll also have an external review of what happened in this case. Street view cars haven't just been used in the UK. These are all the places where people could be affected. More than 30 countries across five continents. It's thought the company may be in breach of data protection and privacy laws. I think Google could face legal difficulties, not just under data protection laws, but also the laws in many countries that make interception illegal. So we might see action from regulators. We might also see legal action from individuals that have been affected. Google says it's now speaking to data protection authorities to ensure the information is deleted as quickly as possible. But the damage to the company's reputation may not be so easy to erase. Maddie Savage, BBC News. Eurostar passengers have been hit by delays following an alert in the Channel Tunnel. Rail journeys were temporarily suspended after a carbon dioxide detector went off early this morning. The nearest train, a shuttle carrying 30 lorries and drivers, was evacuated and taken back to the UK. The Afghan president, Hamid Karzai, has become the first foreign leader to visit David Cameron since he became prime minister. Mr Karzai and Mr Cameron had talks at Chequers. A Downing Street spokesman said they'd agreed the relationship between Afghanistan and Britain should be further strengthened. At least 12 people have been killed and hundreds of thousands forced to evacuate their homes after heavy rain caused flooding in China. The floods have affected over 400 townships across Zhangji province. Residents describe the disaster as the worst in many years. More heavy rain has been forecast for the region in the coming days. Dundee United have won the Scottish Cup final. They put an end to the fairy tale story of surprise finalists Ross County, beating them 3 0. Laura Maxwell reports from Hampden Park. It was a modern-day Highland clearance. Ross County rallied a support of 20,000, four times the population of their hometown of Dingwall. Dundee United's fans, starved of cup success for 16 years, also eager for the silverware. And the Hampden crowd didn't have to wait too long for the action. County's Gary Miller earning a yellow card for this tackle. United, though, put the free kick over the bar. Dundee United's Danny Swanson got the best chance of the first half, but County cut him off at the pass. They couldn't stop United this time, though. A bungled clearance allowed David Goodwillie to put United one ahead, swiftly booked for this celebration. Goodwillie involved again for the second goal, allowing this superb left footer from Craig Conway. And with just minutes to go before the final whistle, Conway did it again, putting Dundee United three ahead and ending County's dream. Dundee United! And as Dundee United salute their fans, it's been a superb ending to this 125th Scottish Cup final. Dundee United take home the silverware tonight, a superb end as well to their centenary season. Laura Maxwell, BBC News, Hamden. Meanwhile, south of the border, Chelsea have won the FA Cup final, beating Portsmouth 1-0 at Wembley. It means they've clinched the league and cup double, as Dan Rowan reports from Wembley. Come on, Pompey! After relegation and administration, this was Portsmouth's chance for a dream end to a nightmare season. At stake for Chelsea, a league and cup double and a place in history. This was the Premier League's princes against Pompey's paupers. Although the latter could have taken an unlikely lead, Pikion denied by Czech. 
Portsmouth's cup run in adversity has defied belief at times this season, and so it proved here, as time and time again their goal enjoyed a charmed life. The woodwork coming to the underdog's rescue no fewer than five times in a one-sided first half. Chelsea were beginning to wonder if it wasn't to be their day, especially when this happened. Portsmouth had their chance, but Prince's penalty was poor. Chelsea had survived, and almost immediately, Drogba finally broke the deadlock. The champions had chances to seal it, Lampard also missing from the spot, but 1-0 it stayed. Portsmouth's season to forget, ending in more despair. Chelsea able to celebrate the club's first ever double. Dan Rowan, BBC News, at Wembley. In Formula One, Mark Webber qualified fastest for tomorrow's Monaco Grand Prix. He beat Renault's Robert Kubitska and his Red Bull teammate Sebastian Vettel. McLaren's Lewis Hamilton was fifth and defending champion Jensen Button eighth. And you can see more on the day's stories on the BBC News channel. And I'll be back with the latest from the newsroom at 10.35. Now on BBC One, it's time for Reporting Scotland. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.